back to my channel. Today we are doing a foundation review. Um, I just got out of the shower. I haven't done anything with my hair. I just put some oil in it. Um, so just disregard that. That's just like this air drying because I'm going to give myself a blowout after I put my face on. But today we're going to do a review and a kind of a first impressions of a new foundation I've been dying to try. Um, and then what I'll do throughout the day, just give you some updates in natural lighting. So I'm going to try and keep it on for like eight, nine, I'm going to try 10 hours, but I can't promise that because that means it's probably like 10 o'clock at night. I am early to bed, early to rise. Today, we are reviewing the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. And also, as you can see, I figured today would be a good day for our foundation review. I'm having a lot of hormonal breakouts lately. So let's dive in. I'm gonna pull this hair back and I gotta give myself a blowout and I need it to be like, probably like 70% dry uh, when I do that. So I'm gonna do that after I we get our makeup on and then that way when you guys see me for my first check-in, my hair will be done. <laughs> so I first wanna read what the claims are of this foundation so we have an idea of what to expect. So first off, I got the shade 420. That is the shade, um, what is this? True beige. Usually like anything with the word beige in it um, is usually a good shade match for me. I only bought one and honestly when I went to buy this in my grocery store, my grocery store, my drugstore, I got this at, I think it was Walgreens. Yeah, I got this at Walgreens and a lot of the shades were um, sold out. So either that means it's a good thing and everybody's loving it and buying it or it just like wasn't stocked. There are 30 shades that come in this foundation. Drugstores are like really stepping up their game for, for shade ranges, so kudos on that. So let's just read it. It retails for $14.99. That's a little bit more expensive, I think, than like your traditional drugstore, but I feel like a lot of drugstore products are kind of spiking up in price lately to keep up. So I'm just gonna read the claim. It's lightweight, breathable, and long wear. Um, introducing our breakthrough long wear foundation with breathable skin technology. Up to 24 hours of fresh wear foundation provides medium to full buildable coverage that lasts all day and allows the skin to breathe. Um, so they're really focusing that this is like more breathable and I, so I, I assume that it's not going to be a heavy formula. And it says medium to full buildable coverage. So we'll see what the coverage looks like and where I have some of my acne and whatnot, we're going to try to build it to see how that does. Um, this formula is three oil observers. Observers. Yeah, that's right, Alicia. This, the formula's three oil absorbers resist sweat, water, and transfer. So that makes me a little nervous just because right now, the time of the year, my skin's super dry and this has oil absorbers um, in it. So not sure how this is gonna do, but we're gonna find out because I'm, I'm really dry right now, so we'll see. Transfer resistant, okay, so we'll try a transfer test. I'm just gonna take like a piece of something, like paper towel or whatnot, and we'll see at the end of the day if it transfers, because I hate foundations that literally, you go to like push your hair out of the face, you have like a streak, you know, missing. So I hate that. So if this is transfer resistant, that's gonna be awesome. Ultra thin liquid goes on smoothly to give there goes that fresh, healthy looking complexion that lasts. Color stays true, so it shouldn't oxidize, so we'll see that and blends in evenly, your makeup looks fresh all day, non-comedogenic, I don't know how to say that word, and formulated with SPF, this foundation is suitable for all skin types, 30 shades for every skin tone. Instructions, we don't know how to apply foundation, but I just like to see what they say. How to apply this, apply all over the face with your fingers or a brush or use a beauty sponge to blend. Okay. So to begin, I'm going to prepare my skin like I always do for all of my foundations. And honestly, you guys, if it's windy, if you can hear that wind, it, it sounds like there's a tornado out there. Like the wind gusts, it's like the Santa Ana winds in here today. So I apologize if you can hear that. So I'm trying to speak really louder to kind of, you know, fuse that sound out. Um, but let's begin. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to prime. I'm very dry right now, so I've been using my La Roche-Posay. It's like a water sunscreen moisturizer because I feel like I'm just going to prepare my skin as I always do and not try like any new products today with this just so I can really focus my attention on the foundation. You guys know I like my Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. 
So we'll stick with this because I know it works well. Great, now the uh, fire alarm's going off. Can you hear that? It's like a Sunday afternoon today and things are crazy outside. This is glass, so very nice. And you get the standard one fluid ounce of foundation. Again, this is the shade 420. It does have a pump, so drugstores I feel have really been stepping up their game with the pump, so again, kudos to them. And it's kind of nice because like if you can see, it's kind of round, it's like your finger like fits right in there. Like it actually feels like really super comfortable. I like that. So I'm going to put this straight on the brush and I'm going to go on this side of my face just because usually with brushes you get a more fuller coverage. So I'm curious to see how it helps out my little family up there. So, so very liquidy. You can see it running down my brush right there. I hope this is a shade match. I'll be really upset if it's not. Um, and it's not supposed to oxidize. So, we shall see. So first initial thought, she's, uh, she is um, fragranced. Yeah, she's very, very fragranced actually. It smells like very perfume-like, like Dior or I don't know. It smells very, yeah. Ooh, that surprises me because their other infallible foundations don't have a fragrance. And that worries me just because my skin is so, so sensitive. It makes me weary that it's fragranced this much. Like it's, it's straight up like a perfume type of smell. So if you're not into that, this may not be for you. Okay, so we blended that out and really nice coverage there. I mean, you can always, that's like my little, my little beauty mark that I have here, a little freckle mole. Um, other than that though, I had some things here that it covered up and over here. This is definitely more of like a satin matte type of finish. It's definitely not super matte. Um, I still have like a little bit, I feel like, of glow there, um, and it's not super dewy, so I would say, it doesn't say like what the finish is, it just as breathable, um, but if I were to pick one, it would definitely be more of like a satin matte finish. So satin matte type of finish, I like the coverage, it's not super, super heavy, which they, that was in one of their claims, it's more like lightweight, but the coverage is really good. Now this one's an actual like scab, so like that, these breakouts were pretty severe. I was so upset because my skin was doing so good and I'm eating so good and I'm eating so well, but I think just the sweat and everything, it just, I didn't handle it very well. Okay, so that's one layer, not bad, not bad for one layer. I'm going to take just another like half a pump and see how buildable this is because it said it's buildable. Okay, so not bad, uh, definitely not full, full on coverage. I do have foundations that will probably cover that up a little bit better. So if you have like very severe acne, I'm not sure this, and if you want a very, very full coverage, I don't know if this would do well. It's okay, like for me who has like areas that are problematic, but if you suffer from very severe acne, um, I'm not sure how, you know, much of a full coverage you would get with this. You definitely have to build it up, but it's definitely doable it's always hard for me um foundations really cake up right here right like that crease where that nostril is but that's that's usually pretty standard like with any foundation that i put on so we have the brush side and we have nothing so before after not bad um sponge on the other side oh i have always forget it's like opposite <laughs> uh, okay real technique sponge oh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do two pumps. You see how liquidy it is. So let's just go straight in. Now with sponges, I know, you know, obviously you're gonna get, I feel like less coverage. Um, so we'll see. If I have to go back in with the brush, I will, cause this did seem to blend pretty, or uh, build pretty nicely on that brush side. So definitely lighter coverage. So I'm gonna go with another pump and see if we can build this up a little bit more. You know what, too, the shade match? I think I did pretty good on the shade match. What do you guys think? So I would probably go with the brush on this one just because I had to use not as much product um, to get the coverage that I needed to do for the sponge side. So I had to use like pretty much two to three pumps 
um, to get the coverage, the same coverage that I did with pretty much like one and a half pumps on the brush side with a half a pump here and see how it does. Like I said, if you have pretty decent skin and you're like blessed, you know, with not a lot of texture, not a lot of breakouts or acne, this will be a very nice like everyday um, formula for you because the areas where I don't have any breakouts or texture, it looks phenomenal on. So this will definitely be, be good for that. I'm not going to try to use like too many powders, but um, I want to put the rest of my makeup on and you don't want to put powders on top of like tackiness. So... Wait, this is the brush size so has been on. Oh, you know what? It's not really tacky, it kind of dried down to like a matte type of texture, like a drying, this one I still just put on, so we'll leave that go. But before I put powders on, I will see and kind of check and let you know um, once I put the rest of my face on, if I ended up putting powder on before like my bronzer, or if this dried down, I'm thinking I'm not gonna have to do that because it feels very dry, like on the brush side that's been sitting there. It definitely dry down so which I would imagine it would do that if it's supposed to be transfer resistant you can't really have like too much of like a sticky movable base you know what I mean if it's supposed to be transfer resistant so we may not have to use powder to put like blush and out on and I'll see if it's spotty and let you know so we got the foundation on at 10 55 a.m. it's Sunday February 24th so pretty much 11 o'clock what's a look what's like eight hours from now 11 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to try to keep this on for like 10 hours, which is like 9 o'clock. I, I, I think I can do that. I know it's a work night, but I think I can do 9 o'clock. I usually go to bed like 9, between like 9 and 10. So I'm so glad. So I'll put the rest of my makeup on, come back on, give you guys an update of how everything blended out. Um, and then we'll do some check-ins from there. And by that time, my hair will be like, you know, blow dry and I'll look like half decent. So I will be back in just a minute. Hey guys, so I am back. Full face of makeup is on and everything turned out beautiful. Except this lash. You ever like, it's too late to like take your lash off and like put it back on so you just want to deal with it. But you know by the end of the day, it's going to cause your eyes to water. Everything is on. It is about noon. Or I'm sorry, it's about 11.37. 11.30. So just a couple updates um, on how things went on over the foundation. I left those as is. I didn't put any extra additional product on there to cover them. I'm just like, whatever, I'm just gonna like roll with them. The foundation blended out beautifully underneath. I used my LA Girl and my Tarte Shape Tape like I always do, and it is beautiful. The Hourglass Powder, I just used directly under my eyes. That looks phenomenal, and also, I did not powder um, where I bronze, so I didn't do like a heavy like contour, I just kind of like bronze up here and a little bit here with a little bit of Milani blush on and I did not use, those were the only powders I used, so I did not use a setting powder before applying those products. I went straight in and it worked nicely, so it's not patchy like I was thinking it was going to be, um, so those worked out great. It definitely dried down to a more matte finish, I feel like. I have like a little bit of like dewiness, I feel like. I don't have any highlighter on my forehead, just like here, here, and in the middle here. Um, so it's definitely, I feel like, mattified a little bit since originally putting it on, but it's because like I put bronzer on and blush. So yeah, I am super impressed with how everything went on, so no issues there. So I will check in in a few hours, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get some natural daylight. It's so windy out there, and I think it's supposed to rain, and it actually got like really dark out there. Um, so I'm going to do my best to try and find good lighting for natural lighting instead of like the studio lights. Um, just because I feel like they kind of alter like the appearance sometimes of foundations, and then you go out in natural light, you're like... This is not what it looked like in the studio. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do my best, try and find some natural lighting. I'm heading down to my mom's house. I'm hanging out there. So that's what I'm going to do. But first, before I do that, I'm going to blow dry my hair because it's about that time. So I'm going to give myself a blowout and I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Oh, and also an update. The fragrance is completely gone. So it's just pretty much when you first apply that foundation, just be prepared for that that fragrance but right now I can't smell a thing um, and I really like the actual like I'm just I'm really liking it right now so I hope it stays like this throughout the day um, we'll see how it holds up but um yeah so I will check in with you guys in a little bit 
Bye. Hey guys, so I am here with my first check-in. It is super. Can you guys see out here? Can you hear it? It's just, I don't even know if you guys can tell, but it's super, super windy out there. So currently without electric, go figure when I'm trying to film this video. So I'm trying to get like a little bit of lighting. So I probably have about like an hour, hour and a half of daylight left. Hopefully the electric kicks on by then. Um, so let's try and do this. So this is what we are working with right now. So far me, I am super impressed with the um, longevity of this foundation. It did start to get a little bit more um, dewy throughout the day, but nothing so bad, not nothing too bad though right now, which I'm fine with because it was super matte when I first put it on. Not super matte, but pretty matte when I first put it on. So the longevity of it's been good. Like it's still clinging on. It still looks good. My contour, my blush is all still on. I did um, when I did go ahead and blow dry my hair. Um, so even with that, the makeup stayed on pretty good maybe just like a little bit it rubbed off up here um but yeah so everything else looks good um let me look around my nose let me see if i can bring this in so around my nose area it's not bad it's starting to i think kind of separate right there but that's usually pretty typical for me um like right in this nostril area Around the mouth looks fine, nothing too dramatic there. Like I said, I just have texture. I've, I've just always had texture. I did have to blow my nose a couple times, so if it looks a little bit off of the nose, that's why. Just my nose is like running so much today. Um, but everywhere else, like I said, it's getting a little dewy, um, but not too bad for how long it's been. Like I said, it's about almost like 4.30. So, yeah. I want to try this transfer test because they said that it is transfer resistant. So I'm losing daylight. Like I have to really get in this window. So I just want to take like a paper towel and just like pat it. Like there's like nothing on there. Look at that. Like right here. Maybe just like slight bit just because I think my oils are coming through. But like honestly, you got to hug somebody. Like you're not going to leave makeup on their shirt. Look at that. There's like nothing on there, so that's good. I like how it's not transfer resistant. I feel like it may have oxidized just a little bit, but then like when I put the makeup on in front of the camera, the shade looked good. And then in the natural lighting, like when I was like out in the car and everything, I should have did one check in there. Um, it looked it looked like a little bit, like you can kind of see. So I think I need one shade lighter, just because I'm so fair right now. Um, but besides that, not looking too bad. I'm I'm very impressed with it so far. So. One more check-in, I'm gonna try to get. Fingers crossed, I get power back like in the next hour or so. Hey guys, so I am here with my final check-in. Yay, the power came back on, thank goodness. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna end this video if it doesn't. So it did come back on. It's about eight o'clock, so what, we put this on about 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about nine hours this foundation has been on. I only got to do one check-in in natural lighting because I wanted to do another one, but the power was still out. Then it clicked on about like an hour or so ago, so it was already dark by that time. But you know, that's okay, I got one check in with natural um, daylight. So here I am eight hours later or like nine hours later and um, you can probably tell it's approaching my bedtime. I'm a little tired. I gotta pull these lashes off because this makeup, I'm just feeling like I want it to go now. Um, overall, I feel like it doesn't look that bad. Um, the only thing I will tell you, it did get a little bit more dewy throughout the day, which I'm actually okay with just because um, my skin is so dry right now. So I'm actually okay with the little bit of dewiness that I have going on. Um, so no big complaints there. If you have oily skin, I'm not sure of the lasting power, how it would be, and you know, it depends on like your primers and skincare um, and products that you use on there beforehand. Um, but so far, I like how that looks. See, in here, the color looks definitely more true. In the natural daylight, it may look like a shade too dark, so I may just drop down a shade. I have 420, um, and then maybe mix the two if that one's way too light, so I'm gonna work with it a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about the foundation. So, 
Like I said, I don't think it's that bad. Um, it's actually held up pretty nice. It looks really, really nice in here. I like how it looks more under these studio lights than in natural lighting. Um, but yeah, pores don't look too, too big. Just around, like, in this section. And this always happens. It just always starts to, like, cake around my nose and separate, like, right here. I didn't... Oh, and also, I didn't mention in the beginning of the video, I did not use a setting spray. Like, typically, I'll use my Pixi Glow Mist or something along those lines. Um, but I wanted to see what the true, um, you know, how this foundation was without a setting spray and just, like, my moisturizer and a little bit of primer. So I didn't use a setting spray, so keep that in mind. And I did not blot or touch up or do anything throughout the day. I did lose my lip color, and I just put, like, a gloss on really quickly. But I haven't touched anything on my face. Um, my bronzer is still here, um, up there, too. So that's nice. The... Like I said, right around my nose, and this is always where I have problems, it just always cakes up around my nose area. Um, I feel like I'll never find a foundation, I'll never like find a foundation that doesn't do that. This side's a little bit more work. It just kicks up in there, and honestly, that's when I like just like throughout the day, I'll just like kind of go like that and smooth it out just because it like cakes up right there. So I'm not like too you know, um, upset about that because I'm just so used to dealing with it. It also definitely got a little bit more dewy, which I'm comfortable with, but honestly, my T-zone, it looks like a healthy glow. It's not like oily, greasy looking skin, you know what I mean? So my nose just has a little bit of shine up here. I can kind of see a little bit of shine, but I actually like that with how my skin's been. Um, the breakouts still don't look too bad. Like I said, I still, like you could still see them when I put the foundation on because I didn't put anything else on them. So that looks fine there. The creasing on the forehead is still good. I have very minimal creasing, which I'm surprised about. Even if I go like this with my sleeve, honestly, like there's nothing there. Like nothing. Definitely transfer resistant. That is a huge, huge plus for me. If I know I can hug somebody and like not get makeup on their shirt, you know, it's it's good. <laughs> yeah, I like it. So um, guys, I appreciate you watching this video today. Um, give it a thumbs up if you guys like foundation reviews. Leave any comments down below. Be sure to subscribe before you leave this channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.